You want to cook a steak, right? And you want to try that sous vide method? I mean, what's that all about? But the problem is, is those sous vide machines are like wicked expensive, right? And I'm not going to go out and buy one of those things. And you're maybe thinking, but you want to try something, right? So let me take you on my journey of the cheapest, if not free, DIY sous vide machine. You probably already have one in your basement. Hello? Beer cooler sous vide. Ready? Here we go. Garden fork. Making things, making food. If I can do it, you can do it. I made a video about this quite a while ago, just in, and the other day the light bulb went off. I had some steaks, I had more than this, and I was like, let's sous vide these puppies again. And I brought out my DIY sous vide beer cooler machine. Total credit, I did not invite this, invite, invent this. Um, Kenji Lopez Alt from Serious Eats and also the fantastic book, The Food Lab. I'll link to that below. Um, he came up with this. I'm just showing you his, I'm spreading his word, okay? This thing is brilliant. It's a cooler, but it's also a heater. I mean, it keeps things warm and it keeps things cool. Let me show you. So coolers are insulated, waterproof plastic boxes, right? The trick here is that the top is usually hollow. So what Kenji suggests, and I did, was I got some spray foam and I drilled two holes here and then you spray foam the whole lid and that helps insulate. Basically a giant insulated thing and you usually could keep, I can't talk. You usually use it to keep things cold, right? But it equally keeps things hot. And sous vide is all about maintaining a constant temperature to cook something to X degrees, right? Enter the beer cooler and hot water and this. Someone's very, very interested in that, right? I salted this steak last night and then I put it in the fridge. I didn't cover it. I kind of like that it dries out a little bit, but I'm gonna add some pepper. Salt and pepper, yellow Labrador, beer cooler. You don't need to use this big of a cooler. Garden Fork is all about Hey, let's try this and see what happens and use what you got. And this is what we got, so that's what we're using. And I got a thermometer thing. So I wanna see what, um, how hot the water comes out of the tap at. Medium rare is what, 130 degrees? This is 128. Maybe it'll kick up a little bit, 127, 126. I'm gonna heat this water up to get that a little above our ideal temperature. Salt and pepper, zipper bag. Um, this goes in here at the bottom. Whoa, there we go. Yeah, like that. And then the goal is to get all or as much of the air out of here as possible. We're gonna do this by submerging it in the water, bringing it all the way up to the zipper part, and then sealing this. Um, because my cooler is so deep, it's kind of hard to show that. So I'm going to show you in a pan of water here. So this is submerged and it, the water pushes all the air out of the bag there. I don't know if you can see that. So we're just going to push the bag all the way down. Just fold it on top of itself. That's totally fine. A little bit of air is totally fine. And then see how I've got this. It's hitting the zipper. The level of the water is hitting the zipper like that. So just push this all down. I run the zipper across while holding this down. It's not rocket science, doesn't have to be perfect. Because on Garden Fork, done is better than perfect, and this is almost done. Now, into the cooler. More hot water needed. More hot water? I guess it would help to turn this on, right? Okay, so this is at about 132. That's pretty good. That's like medium, medium rare. This goes in here and it sits like that. And that's it. That's, I mean, you don't have to use this giant cooler. Um, just a six pack cooler. Kenji in his video on Serious Eats site has just a six pack cooler. This just happens to be what I got, so that's what we use, right? But um, it's brilliant and you don't need to be buying one of those fancy machines, right? That in there 
One hour. Let's watch the Labradors. Ready? Go. Steak time. Wow, it's, wow, you can really feel the warmth in here. And that is at, this thermometer runs really slow, so. Shaking it helps, you know, well, it fogs the lens, sorry. 129, pretty good. Pull this out. How cool is that? So it looks brown, it doesn't look super tasty, but just hold on, okay? Wait till we taste this at the end of the video. So this doesn't look great, that's okay. It's going to be fantastic. Stick around for the tasting at the end of the video. Heat that up really hot. So you want this to be what I call wampin' hot. That's hot. We're gonna throw some vegetable oil in here and then we wanna get it to the smoke point of the oil and then lay the steak in. Someone's very excited about that going in there. All right, vegetable oil. I wanna get it to its heat smoke point, which it's pretty much close to right now. Heat, fan on, sorry. This is hot, this. All right, every 30 seconds now, according to Kenji, I'm gonna turn this. I'm being splattered right now. Um, 30 seconds turn, 30 seconds turn, and a wadge of butter. Maybe there's too much vegetable oil in there. Let's see what happens. Okay, after about two minutes of searing, I want to cook the fat along the edge there. Now comes the hardest part. Let your steak rest. A couple minutes. This smells great. Let's just go right for the center and see what happens. Wow, look how nicely that cuts. Oh, look at that. That all the way through and then the sear. Pink all the way through and the sear. That is amazing, that is amazing. It's tender, it's got flavor from salt and pepper. It's not that overcooked edges. I'm talking really well with food in my mouth, aren't I? Phenomenal. I'm gonna see you in the next video here and we'll talk some more about cooking food and DIY, all right?